Welcome back to another segment here on GEMS Podcast. With me in the hot seat is Johnny Holston, and here is a bit about Johnny. So Johnny is currently based in the Arizona area. He is a copywriter and marketer at South Mountain Messaging. He helps businesses eliminate business owner bias in their marketing and attract right fit clients with their website copy, sales funnels, and other applications like proposals and keynotes. Johnny lives in Phoenix, Arizona with his wife, Lynn, Lindley. Lindy and three month old daughter. So, without further ado, please welcome Johnny to Gems Podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. My pleasure, Johnny. And today we're going to spend time talking about the work that you're doing with um, website copywriting and etc. But before we dive into the meat of the conversation, I definitely want to give the audience a chance to connect with you in a fun and personal way. And hopefully you've done your research so you kind of know what's coming next. And there are two options. We could do an icebreaker or a rapid fire 10 question game. What are you in the mood for? Let's go icebreaker. I'm feeling icebreaker today. Okie dokie. We're breaking the ice with Johnny. So I want you to share something crazy that you have done in your life or something fun and interesting about yourself. Oh, um, you know, I'm not a very crazy person, but the probably the most crazy thing that I've done is go skydiving. I did that last year or yeah, last year at a buddy's bachelor party, went skydiving, jumped out of a tiny little plane and it, it was really scary, but it was really fun. So I'm glad that I did it. Super cool. So what, um, <laughs> whenever you were getting ready to just jump, make that leap out of the plane, what was your mindset like? Were there any racing thoughts in your head or? Oh, um, honestly, thinking back to it made my heart, heart race a little bit because we were in this tiny little plane with the, half of it open. The plane ride up was the scariest part because the plane was definitely felt a little sketchy to me. And the whole way up, I was just thinking, I hope my instructor is good at his job because I am not going to know what to do once we jump out of this plane. So that's what was running through my mind. And it worked out pretty well. And it is, I will say, it's just like everybody says, it's like 15, 20 seconds of complete terror and then a really fun, smooth ride down. So that was my skydiving experience. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that. And that was all encompassed with the bachelor party, right? It was. It was, yeah. (laughs) Interesting. Definitely not like a hangover experience like the movie. (laughs) No, and definitely not. And we we actually went skydiving at six in the morning. So we couldn't really, you know, be hungover going into it. We had to keep our minds sharp. So it was uh, was not like the hangover, but it was still still a blast. Super cool. And I'm glad that you shared that. And now we're going to dive into the work that you're doing now, which is um, copywriting for websites. But one thing that you like to focus on is sticking to a messaging framework is so important. And I feel like sometimes whenever we go into business or someone is building that website, their brand, or they're using storytelling, if they don't have a steady framework or build that foundation, then they may not be attracting their ideal avatar or tapping into their market base. So from your perspective and the work that you're doing, why is sticking to a messaging framework so important? Yeah, great question. The the reason sticking to a marketing framework or messaging framework is so important is because, especially from a from a business owner or like an entrepreneur's perspective, when they go to create marketing materials, we have so many things that we want to say about our business because we love our business and we started it from scratch probably and we put blood, sweat, and tears into it. And the problem is due to all of those things, when we go to market ourselves, we find ourselves saying a lot of things that are important to us, the business owner, and not important to our customers and our clients. So having a framework, it kind of restricts us to only saying things that are really important to our customer. And my job is to help take companies through um, a messaging and marketing framework. We outline a few different 
um, topics that fit into a marketing script. That way, anytime we decide we, they go and do marketing materials or, or create something to market their product, they can stay within things and topics that are going to relate to their customer and not just what they want to talk about. Mm, super cool. So I'm going to put myself in the hot seat here and have you analyze me and my framework. So like for my show, like I have three core pillars, which are to educate, inspire and motivate. But then I also want to weave in diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging. So would you say that um, whenever you saw me reach out to you, would you say that you got a feel of me sticking to that messaging based on what you saw? I would, that's a great question. I would need to look more at it and I would need to dive in, but I think so. I definitely got like, I definitely got the, the message and the vibe that like everybody's welcome and, and, and everybody has a place at your table, which I think is super, super important. So um, that's like, a, that's kind of a good example of, of messaging there is, is net, a core value is something that's really important to you. So to turn that into a marketing message, it would be like everybody's welcome and everybody has a seat at my table and come bring your expertise to my my podcast because I want to share my platform. So that's yeah, that's a that's a way to put yourself on the hot seat. I, I definitely definitely thinking back can feel that one thing strongly for sure. Awesome. And thank you for explaining that because I always like to connect the dots with the audience so they don't feel like it's just one sided. And whenever they listen to a segment, they're actually walking away with some substance that they can take and apply based on where they're at in their journey. And that brings me to eliminating wrong fit clients with the right marketing messaging, because sometimes if you feel like you're talking to everybody, you could be talking to nobody because you're not really knowing who your ideal avatar is unless you have like certain core values versus a niche that you're focusing on. Like I know there's amazing podcasters in my Rama business and they niche down, but then I look at it from, okay, no, these are my core values and this is what I want to see in my community. So rather than niching down and having the same old topics just from different people, I was like, as long as my um, topics complement the core values, then I feel like there is a place for everyone because that's what diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging is about it. Us all coming together to really complement and really build those synergies. So whenever you think about eliminating the wrong fit client, what is your process of elimination? Yeah, great question. So for me personally, when I work with a client, if we want to eliminate a wrong fit customer. The first thing that I'll do is get on the phone with three to five, maybe 10, depending on what, what the scope of the project is, cu customers of the client. And I always say, put me on the phone with your best customers. And I want to ask them questions. I want to learn about the problems that they were facing and the positive outcomes that they experienced because of the product that they, they bought or the service that they bought. And in talking to the best fit customers, we can create our marketing language to meet that demographic and that audience and speak to the same worldview that they have. And in doing that, we'll kind of eliminate naturally the people who don't line up with that worldview. So um, for example, a client I had, they were a home, a home service company who they were, they, they refinished floors, but they were so good at what they did that it only took them one day to do the service. So that's a value, that's, that's a high price value to have someone come in and out and refinish your flooring in one day. Um, the problem was their messaging was so focused on the one day process that it was attracting people who thought it would be a cheaper product because of the one day service. So what we did was we spoke to customers who had no problem with the price point and were not on the cheap side and we learned what mattered to them and what they were trying to, to find in the product and the service that they were purchasing. We changed the messaging on the client's website to speak to the, the feedback those customers gave us to, and then weeded out the language about the quick and easy process. And that kind of pushed away a lot of those types of, of customers. So that's just one example of you know, how you can use your marketing message to kind of dial in on your ideal clientele. And I like how you tweaked it because sometimes all it is is just a small tweak in order to make sure that the messaging is reaching 
the the end user and I like the fact that you get on the phone with five to ten people like who um who their customers are and you look at okay who's already a good fit and then who isn't and then you weed it out via that process of elimination and that's like a discovery call some people call it consultations or etc but whenever you think about your business and some of the people that are coming to you do you have a consultation call with them or a discovery to let them know okay this is what I can do for you or I can't do this for you, but I can refer you to someone else who you're a better fit for. Yeah, absolutely. That That's every time. So I'll start with like a 30 minute consultation um, to kind of listen to what's going on with the client. And since I'm a marketer, I do get people from time to time that ask for Google ads or they want Facebook ads. So that's not what I do. But um, so, yeah, I will get on a call with them and kind of pass them out to somebody who I know and trust to help them with that type of stuff. But uh, everything that I do starts with a conversation because um, everybody needs something a little bit different. And even if they need the same thing as somebody else, they probably need it for a different reason. So I try to have, you know, give everybody at least 30 minutes or an hour of my time, regardless of whether or not I end up doing business with them. Yeah, ab absolutely. I'm over here just processing everything. And I think whenever you do that, then it gives you a chance to build a rapport in an informal manner. And then whenever you get ready to do business together, then you could go from informal to formal and you really know, okay, this is how I can work with this individual. And we already kind of know each other because we did the legwork up front. So thank you for sharing your, your process, Johnny. And then I know another key area that you focus on is how business owner bias can ruin marketing and how to avoid it. And from my background, I spent 15 years in corporate, 12 in oil and gas and energy. And sometimes mm -hmm. you have unconscious biases whenever you are pitching or bidding for a new client or we're getting ready to build partnerships and et cetera. But sometimes if you go in with those unconscious biases, you're already shutting down that person or that business before they even get a chance to tell you how they can add value to you and become an asset in your pipeline. Would the same apply for you in your realm of things? Yeah, I think so. That's a really interesting point. Um, a the the way that for me, in the terms of business owner bias, kind of what I focus on is taking the things that the cust that the the customer care about cares about and relating it to what the business owner cares about. So helping kind of the business owner reprogram their mind into considering more what their audience is looking for rather than considering what they just think is important so a little bit of a different twist on it but probably the same concept for sure okay so pretty much like a streamlined process but then thinking about it that i am becoming a solution to the problem not a problem so i want to solve your problem this is how i'm going to do it while removing the biases because you're getting rid of the what's in it for me and then you're looking at it what's in it for we and how am i going to help transition and transform so they have what they need when they need it yeah that's a really good that's a great way of putting it the probably the the best way for me to also say like the eliminating the business owner bias is helping them understand the positive outcomes that they help create and the problems that they help solve better than they ever have before. Because a lot of business owners or, or entrepreneurs will have a, they have an idea of what they think they do. Even if their product is great and they run a successful business, they might still not be like in line with how the user actually feels. So helping them go through a process of understanding that usually frees them up and helps them be more creative in a marketing sense. And then we can get more creative with our copywriting and stuff like that. Super cool. And I figured whenever you begin to outsource and they bring someone in like you who will help them focus on that copywriting, it's like operate in your lane and stay in your zone of genius and what you're not good at, outsource it so someone else who is operating in their zone of genius can handle that for you. But of course, do your due diligence and your, your market analysis and research to understand what what goes into what the person is going to provide provide for you but know that you're not the subject matter expert at it so just leave that expertise to the person that is but then also build upon what what they're um asking 
based on the questions and then also telling them what it is that you need and y'all build it together as a partnership. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. So now as we begin to wind down, is there anything else that I didn't bring up or ask Johnny that you think would be a great value um, to the conversation? Um, yeah, well, if for anybody out there, business owner or even marketing director who might just be getting their feet wet in, in their new role, you can go to my website, troubleshootyourmarketing.com. And on that website, you can take a business, a marketing assessment, which will take probably 15 or 20 minutes of your time. And by the time you're done with it, you'll get a report that's about 50 pages long, kind of breaking down all the areas you're scoring high in your marketing and areas that might need a little bit of work because nobody has their marketing perfect. Not even me. I took the report and I have a lot of things I need to work on myself, even though I'm a marketer. So if you go to troubleshootyourmarketing.com, you'll see a button to take that report and doing that report, it's completely free. It will give you a lot of insight on where you can maybe impl uh, implement better messaging throughout all of your marketing. And like we talked about earlier on this podcast, if you take the, um, if you take the assessment, I'll get a report, I'll get a copy of your report and I'll be able to see everything you scored high on. And I'm more than happy uh, to sit down on a Zoom call with anyone who takes that report and kind of go through it with them and give them some action items moving forward. Totally free just uh, to help get you moving in the right direction after the assessment. Super cool. And thank you for adding that value to the community there, Johnny. And now let's jump into the CTA, which is our call to action. Outside from them taking the rapport, what is your call to action for the audience, whether it's a challenge or where they could plug in with you on social media or where you primarily hang out in the metaverse? Yeah, for sure. So you can always follow me on Instagram at Johnny Holston or find my website, which is troubleshootyourmarketing.com. The other thing that I kind of challenge everybody to do is if the idea of messaging, like if you've never experimented with messaging or you've never invested a lot of time and energy into your messaging, I tell everybody I can to go read the book, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. It, it is probably the best uh, book that you could read if you're interested in messaging. And I actually, it's right behind me on the shelf here for people who are watching, Building a Story Brand by Donald, Donald Miller. If Hold you, it up, um, yeah. Johnny, so they could actually see it because it looks like it's kind of far away. So if, you, if you're interested in reading it, find me on Instagram, send me a DM. I have a whole case of these books because I love it so much. And I will, I will send a free copy to, to as many people that reach out until the books run out. So that's my, that's my call to action. Oh, super cool. You should definitely send me a book so I can look at, the, <laughs> look at that. Yes, please. Yes, I will do it. Oh, well, man, it has been such a pleasure chatting with you, Johnny. All of your contact information will be in the show notes. So all, all you audience members need to do is just scroll on down and tap in with Je Johnny and get his info. And make sure you go support him on social media and the incredible things that he's doing, as well as take that report so you can analyze where you are when it comes to marketing. We all have something that we need to work on, and that's a part of personal development and that personal development can help with professional development and Johnny once again I want to thank you so so much audience we are on 40 platforms so make sure you like comment and subscribe you can see the video to this recording by going to at gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp on YouTube that's our YouTube channel and all videos are there from Johnny to all all the other guests that have been on. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank each one of you for supporting on a regular basis. Because of you, we're now ranked in the top 2% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts per www.listennotes.com. And if you're interested in having your, your brand heard here, the products and services, please reach out so you could become a brand sponsor or ambassador. And you can find more info by going to genesisamarskemp.net or sending me an email at genesisamarskemp at gmail.com. Until next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have yourself an amazing one.